This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. You'll never know, you'll never know, you'll never know, you'll never know. One of the closest Hasidim of the Baal Shem Tov was Reb Zev Kittis. One day, Reb Zev came to the Helig of Al Shem Tov and said to him, Rebbe, I'm having a hard time making a living. Maybe you have a suggestion. So the Baal Shem Tov told him, here's a little bit of money. I want you to go buy some diamonds, and you're going to take these diamonds and sell them in a particular town. Here's some more money. This will pay for your trip. And when you're finished, you'll come back here. Reb Zev, he takes the money, and he goes and buys a couple of small diamonds, and he buys his passage on the ship, and then he gets on board and waits to see what's going to unfold. And the ship lands in a few ports along the way, and at some point, in between one port and the next, the ship ends up in some rough seas, and the storm is actually more than the ship can handle, and the ship breaks apart. Many of the passengers died, and only a few survived, holding on to little pieces of wood that were left over from the ship. Reb Zev, he had some things with him, he still had his tefillin, he grabbed onto this piece of wood, and held on for dear life. The wood eventually took him to an abandoned island, and everybody else that had survived either had died along the way or ended up someplace else. Reb Zev, he gets on shore and starts to look around, and he realizes that there's fruit, there are bananas, there are coconuts, there's fruit for him to eat, and he's able to collect rainwater and drink, and he realizes, okay, I'm not gonna die. I'm just stranded on this island, but I'm not gonna die. And every day he davens, and he explores a little bit more of the island. And one day, as he's exploring the island, he comes across a town, an actual town, with houses and roads, and there's a bakery. And as he walks around, he discovers there's a shul, and only a shul. There's no church or any other type of house of worship, just one central synagogue. He looks around, he sees that for sure people were here not so long ago, but he can't seem to figure it out. In the meantime, he's grateful to have shelter, and he moves into one of the homes. Friday morning, he wakes up to Davin, and he hears there's a big ruckus in town. He goes outside, and he sees hundreds of people are running around. Religious Jews left and right. He tries to stop one of the people. He says, hey, where are you from? What's going on here? This person was carrying a chicken under his arm, and he said, sorry, I have to get this chicken slaughtered. I have to get ready for Shabbos. I don't have any time to talk with you right now. Then he sees another person. Hey, hey, where are you from? Sorry, I don't have any time. I have to get ready for Shabbos. Very, very busy. Very busy. Sorry, no time to talk. And everyone he tries to stop, they all say to him, Sorry, we're too busy. We can't talk with you. We have to get ready for Shabbos. Shabbos comes, and Reb Zev goes to the shul. And the shul is packed with people, the men's and women's section. And when davening is over, he goes over to the rabbi. And he says to him, Rabbi, where are you from? And the rabbi said, Um, that's not important right now. You probably need a place to eat, so why don't you come to my house tonight? So Zev eats at the rabbi's house, and the next morning, he davens in shul, and the rabbi invites him for lunch, and then for the third meal, Motzeh Shabbos, the rabbi makes havdalah, and one by one, all of the people that were there, they put their pinky fingers into the wine from the havdalah candle, wipe it over their eyes, and one by one, they start to disappear. One by one, everyone's disappearing, and Reb Zev is trying to figure out what's going on. The rabbi sticks his fingers in the wine, and he disappears as well. And just like that, this whole community that was there all Shabbos disappeared. Reb Zev, he spends the week by himself, and he wakes up Friday morning, and just like the last time, there are all these people running around getting ready for Shabbos. He tries to stop somebody in the street, hey, what's going on here? And they say, sorry, I'm so sorry, I can't talk with you, I'm getting ready for Shabbos, I have no time to talk. And so Reb Zev accepts the fact that nobody's going to tell him anything. He goes Friday night, he's invited to the rabbi's house. He tries to ask the rabbi questions, and the rabbi tells him, Motzei Shabbos, he'll explain everything. Motzei Shabbos comes, and one by one, everybody puts their fingers in the Havdalah wine, and they start to disappear. And Reb Zev says to the rabbi, who's the only one remaining, what's going on here? The rabbi says to him, we're part of a Jewish community that was murdered in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, in the time of the Holy Temple. And it was decided in heaven that even though we had been killed, it was really unjust that we were killed at that time and place wasn't our time. And so as a compensation, our souls are allowed to come down into this world, into physical bodies, on Friday and on Shabbos. Because as exalted as things are in the world to come, 
There's nothing like Shabbos in this world. And so in order to compensate us, we can spend every Shabbos here on this abandoned island. And for many, many generations we've been here, and nobody ever found us until you showed up. Reb Zev said, well, how do I get off this island? I don't want to be stuck here forever. And the rabbi said, you'll be here another week, and then after Shabbos next week, I'll tell you how to leave. And just like that, the rabbi puts his fingers in the wine and disappears. Reb Zev, he figured, hey, if the rabbi's disappearing, why don't I stick my fingers in the wine? But it was just wine. It didn't do anything for him. And he waited the entire week. Friday morning, he wakes up, and he hears the sounds again. He doesn't even ask anyone. He just waits for Shabbos to start. Friday night, Shabbos day, Shabbos afternoon, Motzei Shabbos, one by one, everyone disappears, and just the rabbi is left. Reb Zev says to the rabbi, okay, I've waited a week. Now tell me how to get off this island. The rabbi said to Zev, come, let's go to the seashore. And they walk down together. The rabbi hands Reb Zev a parchment. And on the parchment are written the letters of the Aleph Bet, all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The rabbi says to him, Zev, you take this parchment, look at the letters, and concentrate on where you want to be, and you'll be transported there. And with that, the rabbi walks away while Reb Zev is standing there on the beach. Reb Zev, he looks around and he says, I want to be by the Hei the Gebal Shem Tov back in Mezhibuz, with my family, where I started off. Please, Hashem, however this works, transport me there. And he stares at the letters on the parchment. At that moment, he's standing in front of the Hei the Shem Tov back in Mezhibuz. And the Baal Shem Tov sees the Reb Zev holding the parchment. He reaches out his holy hand and pulls the parchment from Reb Zev's hands. He says to him, Thank you, Zev. That's exactly what I needed you for. You've now completed your mission. For the holy work that I have to do in this world, I'm going to need to travel great distances very quickly. I knew that that amulet existed, but there was only one way to get it, and I knew that I could trust you to do it. So now that your mission is complete, I'll give you a blessing for Parnassa, for your livelihood, that you should never be lacking again. And I'm very grateful for you fulfilling this mission for me. Become a supporter of this podcast by going to HasidicStory.com, H-A-S-I-D-I-C-Story.com.